everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the like and notification button bell thingies and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. Today I have Damon Johnson, not only of Thin Lizzy, Alice Cooper fame, uh, not only of Leonard Skinner fame, but also of, hey, Brother Kane fame. How are you doing, Damon? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, man. That That's a dazzling resume when you say it like that. Um, 16 year old me would have never believed that you know if you'd have told him that was what was going to happen one day but uh i'm doing really good Ernest. it's nice nice to talk to you right on so uh we won't keep damon for too long but uh he's well he's, he's got a show to play tonight today is the first of november it's pretty cold here in canada um where are you playing today are you in virginia yeah we're in richmond virginia tonight and it's kind of the first show of a lengthy two-week run. Um, I don't know how I ever agreed to this, Ernest, but I've got to sing 11 shows in 12 days. So I'm just um, gonna say, I'm, drink, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking my uh, my throat coat tea and I'm doing vocal warm-ups every morning and every afternoon. I, f I feel like I'm kind of living like an athlete. So. Um, Consider yourself, I guess, lucky that you're talking to me today because I don't know how much more talking I'm going to be doing as as the shows pile up. I may have to, I may have to let you talk to Glenn or one of the other guys. You know, well, you can you can sing the rest of the interview <laughs> <laughs> if you like. I but you might like that. I don't know if your if your listeners, if your viewers would like that. But, I'm sure yeah. they would, Damon. Actually, um, or you can play guitar. Um, you can get that kind of a Steve Vai kind of wah wah pedal for uh, Yankee Rose and just uh, wah wah oh, your way through. What a great idea, man! I was obsessed with that record when it came out. When I was you know a what kid. song I liked off of that one? Um, my favorite song and the solo for Ladies Night in Buffalo. You remember that song? Hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Listen, man, Steve Vai could and still can do no wrong in my book. Um, man, when Steve put out that solo record called Flexible, you know, he was fully on my radar. And that was all because of Guitar Player Magazine. But I became obsessed immediately. And then he winds up joining the David Lee Ross solo band. And I just... Yeah, for a minute there, I was doing my best to try to, in my way, make an attempt to try to figure some of that stuff out. I could play the Attitude song. I could play most of it because there was, uh, you know, you could find this, the tablature in some of the magazines. I remember but tab. Six, Steve, three, zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Steve is a guitar wizard like none other, I think, we've ever seen. I he's kind of at his own mountaintop with that, you know, and uh, what a commitment to the instrument, you know, talk about a guy that plays for hours every day. It's he's like John Coltrane or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing with Steve Viaz, I mean, I think he's a, uh, he's a human anomaly or experiment. Have you seen his hands? Like his fingers are so long. <laughs> yeah. He's got big hands. Yeah. He's got big hands. I saw a picture of his hands one time and I was like putting mine up to his to sort of compare. Mine are pretty big, but they're not Steve Vai big. So. Yeah. Speaking of Steve Vai, then we're going to get into Brother Kane. That's why we're here. Um, big shout out to Melissa and uh, Michelle at uh, Mad Inc. PR. Uh, great interview. Uh, guest, uh, they brought me with you, Damon. And we're Thank trying you. to see if we can get Joe Satriani on the show. And that's how I'm tying into Joe Satriani and the Vi thing. So um, the big news is um, the reissue, the 30th anniversary. I mean, how time flies of the, of the Brother Kane EP. I mean, where does the time go? Yeah, man, listen, none of this was going to happen. None of it, it this just wasn't on my radar in any way, Ernest. I've, since the band broke up in 2000, I've always maintained nothing but love and gratitude to the fans, to the original band members, to everything that happened to us in the 90s. Um, it was great. But like right after that, I got divorced. I got remarried. Um, you know, my three older kids, I was just focused on kind of getting them stable. 
after mm-hmm. you know their their mom and I split and and I was just kind of content. I was writing, I was doing other stuff. I had no idea, man, I was going to get to play with John Waite, the great British yeah. singer. I, I played in his band for a couple of years. I made a cool record with uh, Scott Rockenfield and Kelly Gray. Kelly was in Queens yeah. right at the time. Kelly, we yeah. made a great, had a project called Slave to the System. And we made a badass record that had we made some better decisions, I think it could have seen, could have gotten a little more, could have achieved more, could have reached more people. Mm-hmm. But then Alice Cooper, 2004, I did a country band in 2007, back to Alice Cooper, Thin Lizzy, 2011, Black Star Writer shortly yeah. after that. And, uh, you know, man, I came home after that and I was just decided I wanted to be a solo artist full time. And I was really content to do that. And then two years ago, three years ago now, no, just two, the phone rang and it was Ricky Medlock and Johnny Van Zant, my old friends from Lennon Skinner and um, Gary Rosington, long, just my hero, one of my heroes. And, uh, you know, he had health problems and it was an honor to be asked to help them out. And now that's turned into a full-time position for me. The circumstances aren't ideal. Right. We would all rather have, have Gary still here and, and doing what he loves and what he was so masterful at. So it was during that first year with Skinner that my new manager, I haven't had a manager, Ernest, since Brother Kane in 2000. So I've gone, you know, at that point, I'd gone 21 years just kind of managing myself. And, you know, the bands that I was in had had management for that band, but not really kind of right. working with me in my, my career path. So I got a great new manager, Kevin, and uh, – Brother Kane was all his idea. You and I wouldn't be talking about this if it weren't for Kevin. Uh, he always loved Brother Kane. And he kept hearing people ask about Brother Kane at these Leonard Skinner shows. Right. So he was the one that encouraged me to give it some thought. He was the one that said, hey, because initially I was like, man, there's just no way to get the original band together. It's impossible. Everyone has different lives. They live in different states. There's just no way. And um, he just said, look, buddy, it was your band. You started it. You wrote the songs. You sang the songs. You have continued to play those songs mm-hmm. in whatever solo activity you, you've done over the last 20 years. And he was right about all of that. So who I do have in the band is Glenn Maxey, the original bass player from the very beginning. He was with me when we were showcasing back in 1990. We were in a band called Child. I was just a guitar player. But Ernest Child, all the labels passed until we played for the last label. That was Virgin Records. And Aaron Jacobus at Virgin Records loved our songs and he really liked my guitar playing enough that he signed us to a development deal and put in time and money to help us find another singer. So we spent the next six months looking, eight months looking. And it just led to nowhere. And Glenn was the one that said, dude, you should sing. I'm like, man, I just sing like Almond Brothers and Thin Lizzy covers in the clubs. I'm not a singer. It's like, yeah, you're a good singer. You should do it. <laughs> so, you know, we went in, uh, we went in the studio six months later, made that record. And the very next year, Got No Shame was the number one rock track in America. And uh, yeah, I felt like I got shot out of a cannon. I mean, I just wasn't. Uh, there, there was no manual. There was no owner's manual on how your your ego navigates something like I that. that. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man. I'm just. I've always been proud of these songs and proud of what we achieved. But again, I was just very content to do my own thing, and I was going down a different path. So, right. I'm. Uh, I'm having a blast. I'm just having a blast playing the songs again. The band sounds amazing. The band is comprised of Glenn is here, of course, on bass, but the rest of the band are my friends that I've been making music with Ernest over the last 12 to 15 years. I've played with my drummer, Jared Pope, twice as long as I played with Scott Collier in the original Brother Kane. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we just have a telepathy in the studio on the stage and, uh, 
So I'm just I'm proud of everything that's happening. Proud of the band and uh, and just grateful, man, that the fans are starting to show up. You know, we we've got we've got very reasonable expectations. You know, it's not like Brother Kane was Queensryche or you know Stone Temple Pilots or some band at that level. We we did okay, but we didn't we didn't quite poke through the next tier. You know, we were th- we we were close a couple times, but man, we were just a straight ahead rock band in the nineties in the midst of all that punk rock and alternative. And I mean, we loved a lot of that music, man. We, 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 we embraced all that, but because of our first record, the die had really been cast as to, Hey, these guys are a, they're a classic. They're a very classic rock influence band. And there weren't a ton of us at that moment because, you know, right as our record was coming out, you know, Nevermind had been out for a year. 10 by Pearl Jam had been out for about six months. And as you know, everything changed right then yeah so we were we were grateful very grateful to get to go on tour over the next four or five years with our heroes van halen aerosmith robert plant leonard skinner bad company it was incredible man Mm -hmm. but the audience was a little older the kids were going to see soundgarden and alice in chains and smashing pumpkins and, you know, if I'd have been 19, 20, year old, 20 years old at that time, I would have been going to see those bands, too. Right. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, the good news is I feel like our songs have stood up. They, you know, they don't sound dated or, you know, for the most part, man, the lyrics all hold up. There's, there's some good songwriting. I'm proud of it and, you know, really proud of everything we, we accomplished. So it just, it's an incredible feeling now, man, to be here. You know, the band split up in, in 2000. So what was that? 20, 23 years ago. Yeah. It was awesome. So um, you've got a couple of new songs um, that you're releasing. Have they been released or that you're releasing them? Pardon no, me. they're out, man. They okay. just they came out on the streaming sites um, last weekend. Okay, that's what I uh, Yeah, Blinded by the Sun and Are You In There Anymore? And, uh, you know, man, these are two brand new songs. I... I had a buddy ask me, he goes, well, how are you good? How did you do that, man? Did you just try to get in the mindset you were in 30 years ago? I'm like, are you smoking crack? <laughs> like, <laughs> who could do that? There's no way to to pull off something like that. Yeah, you just so, evolve. Uh, but I mean. Yeah, man. Yeah, I just, um, I'm so much more confident as a songwriter now, Ernest, mm-hmm. way more than I was in the 90s. I have a lot to say. I've lived a lot of life. I've been through a lot of things. My my observation of the world and my friends or things that they might be going through or things in the news, whatever, man. I'm. I just wish I'd have. Yeah, man. I just it would be amazing if I could have had a little more of this perspective way back then. Who knows? Maybe I'd have been an even better songwriter. Uh, because I'm certainly that now, and I'm just so much more comfortable in my own skin. Right. You know, I don't worry so much about what other people think about new songs. You know, my last three solo records have really helped me achieve that, Ernest. Like, is, if I love it, if it gets me excited, if it gives me goosebumps, that's it, man. That's all I need. That's all I need. And I and I'm confident I'll find some other people that are going to get excited about it as well. You know, that's a good way of uh, for me to segue. I just interviewed a guy that wrote a book about the Grateful Dead, and he said they didn't play for you. They played for themselves, knowing that if they were enjoying themselves, hopefully you'll catch that vibe. Again, man, I understand that now. I didn't get that as a younger man. And, uh, you know, I... I just have so much respect for so many bands and artists. It's not about, oh, they're making money, they're selling tickets. I can just tell the fulfillment of it. You know, I've gotten to know the DeLeo brothers a little bit in Stone Temple Pilots recently, just recently. Hmm. And I love their songwriting so much. And I think of all of those bands from that era – I probably listen to STP the most just for my own personal enjoyment because there's some sophisticated chord changes and things. And I, Scott Weiland, what a great, 
what a great lyricist what a great his melodies man i mean i it's i just can't believe that the brothers would show up with these kind of sophisticated chord progressions and then scott would sing this beautiful melody over it even if it was a heavy a heavy riff he still came up with great almost like pop melodies man like uh so i feed off of that stuff and i and i said to dean i says man it just had to be a thrill in the 90s to to be writing and recording these songs and watching it catch fire in a huge way um you know i've done a lot in my career ernest and i'm grateful for all of it and you know when my time here is done you know my friends and family they they'll say oh man damon he he did a lot of stuff man and he had he had a ball I've never gone to the mountaintop with like a platinum record. You know, I haven't, you know, I'm, I've been a blue collar working stiff my whole life and I'm proud of that. And it's been amazing. And I've put my kids through school and, and all of that, but it's, uh, it's just fun, man, to get to know these other artists, uh, whether they be my heroes from the past or, or contemporary artists and talk to them. And, um, I don't know, man, I just get inspiration from anywhere now. So, uh, that, is in these two new songs, you know, and I, I, I look forward to writing some more. I, I'd love for us to put out a full length record at some oh, point. Oh, perfect. Soon. I think that's what a lot of the viewers are looking forward to is the possibility of a fourth album. Thank you, man. Um, I won't keep you much longer. I know that you're getting ready for a show tonight. Um, a couple things. Um, where can people go to get the, uh, some merch and some, uh, brother Kane, uh, music. Man, um, you'll love this, Ernest. When the band broke up in 2000, you remember, this is right about the time, you know, like social media hadn't happened yet, but but there was email and websites and stuff like that. Yeah. And my buddy called me, he said, hey, man, you need to, you need to pay that $8 a year and keep that brotherkane.com URL. Cause you just never okay. know. That's what he said. So, yeah. It's worth all it. All these years, all these years, man, I kept it. And, you know, my wife would be doing our taxes. And of course you're trying to write off everything you can. She's like, Oh, I guess we can write off this $8 for this. What is this website? <laughs> Business expense. <laughs> yeah. So send your listeners, man, brotherkane.com. It's all right there, man. We've got a great new shop. Uh, some brand new one of a kind merch. You can get the 30th anniversary vinyl reissue of that debut album, which was never put out on vinyl. None of our titles were ever released on vinyl. So you can get that right now. There's a, there's a couple of variants. There's a bundle. Uh, you can also order the CD reissue, Ernest, and there's two unreleased songs from the original recording sessions from 1992. Oh, wow. And those are cool. Um, and then the other thing I'm so excited about, man, is we put these two brand new songs on a seven inch single. It's a black translucent seven inch blinded by the sun on one side. Are you in there anymore on the other? And it's killer. It's killer. So that's like a 45. Sounds cool. Yeah. So 45. Oh man. I remember those little plastic things you put in the middle. Yeah, see, we fixed that. We just put the spindle hole in the middle, and all you got to okay. do is just put it on your turntable and just change the speed. You're oh. you're off and running. I like the little plastic thing. I'd play with it and I'd pluck it across the room. Yeah, <laughs> I used to throw. It. I used to hit my sisters in the head with that. Oh man, crazy. one of those great memories. So the shows uh, tonight. What's kind of the um, the set list? Is there going to be any Skinner in there? Is there going to be any anything other than Brother Kane? Well, I'll tell you this, man. Right now, we haven't, we're not doing any Skinnered right now. Um, we've always had a couple Thin Lizzy songs that we would cherry pick. Those will pop up. Um, yeah. We're definitely playing the two new songs. And, you know, the thing that the thing the band has done is we've kind of over prepared. So we've got sort of a master list of songs. There's, there's six or seven tunes, man, we have to play every show. But I want to mix it up as we go along, uh, take advantage of some of these sound checks and knock the dust off some deep tracks off of 
Wish Pool or Seeds or yeah. or the debut record as well. Um, yeah, man, I just um, it just again, it just feels so fulfilling that this is all happening. Um, I mean, I'm talking to you right now, man, on this tour bus we just got this yesterday to help us with this uh two and a half week run because there's no way to to do it in the van and a trailer so uh yeah. we feel we, we feel very fortunate man that we can put enough shows together that we can travel comfortably and uh that way i can get some sleep man get those yeah. vocal cords rested <laughs> so i can do all this singing yeah okay so um, i'll let you get some sleep just a couple quick questions favorite canadian band or artist past present or past present well the big three for me are easy because they're at the forefront that's Joni mitchell right. neil young rush i knew rush I love, come up it comes up every I, time and it's funny you say well, it has three. to what about triumph? it has to bro triumph i love listen man uh can i tell you yeah can i tell you my rick emmett story yeah i just talked to rick three days ago he's hilarious I would love to talk to Rick. I've never spoken directly to him, but the coolest thing happened to me when I was a kid. I'm in high school. Okay. I was subscribing to Guitar Player Magazine. That's how I got that transcription to the Steve Vai uh, Attitude. Attitude song. Yeah. So it may have even been that same year, Guitar Player did a Rick Emmett cover story. And I read that interview and I was so moved I was so inspired the the things he said the way he talked about his path his writing his practicing the guitar I'm sure I could find I, I kept that magazine I've got it in a box somewhere but Ernest I took the time to hand write a letter to Guitar Player Magazine you know a letter to the editor and I it, literally man I'm just like this kid living in bum fuck nowhere Alabama on a farm you know and I'm like yeah my name's Damon and I just want to say how much I love this interview and Rick the things he said about blah 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 you know you know that's it I just felt like I wanted to express that wow so man about a month later I come home from school there's a letter laying on my bed it's from Rick Emmett the publisher, the editor of Guitar Player Magazine had sent that letter to Rick. Wow. And Rick wrote me, and I have it somewhere. I'm the, I've got to find it. It's in a box somewhere. But Rick Emmett wrote me a letter. And he said, Damon, I just want to thank you for your kind words. I want to encourage you. Man, I'm, whoo, I'm going to get choked up. <laughs> it's all just right, talking man. about it. Ernest, it. It meant so much to me. I mean, it like changed my life. I'm like, Rick Emmett. <laughs> Rick Emmett is encouraging me to keep it up. You know, like I'd never talked to it. There were no rock stars within, you know, 100, 200 miles of me. I'd have to come to Nashville or something. That was, that was about 200 miles. It just... It made such an impression on me, man. I'll never forget it. Such encouragement. Just based on what I had said. You know, I'm a kid, a teenager. I mean, I was starting to play. I was way into it, and I was getting pretty good. But it's insane I hope I get how, to see Rick face to face. It's, it's, it's insane how people touch other people's lives. Like, I was talking to Angry Anderson last night. I was telling you, Rose Tattoo in Australia. I was reading some of his... Um, fan mail that was on a previous interview i had with them and they were saying how much they loved them and everything and they, he's made an impact on their lives and then when the camera panned to him he he was in tears so i don't know what i'm doing lately <laughs> oh listen buddy i the music business has changed so much yeah um you know man we're all everybody's getting older you know we're all starting to kind of get into that area where man people are they've got health challenges or they're you know, their parents are aged and they've got to take care of, help take care of them or their, their kids are graduating school and out of the house. And, you know, man, it's, it's a unique time in everyone's life. Uh, certainly, you know, your age and my age, 
Uh, I can't imagine what it's like for the guys in their seventies, like Rick and, you know, my buddy, my buddy, Ricky Medlock and Skinner. We, you know, we talk about it all the time. Alice Cooper. I just saw Alice last month in, in Nashville, man. Alice is 75 years old and look at Sammy. Rocking, he looks man. like he's 36. Hanger. Sammy's incredible. He, he, he is the energizer bunny. He's just, he's never going to stop. So, but I do think, man, for those of us that get to keep following our bliss and pursuing the dreams that we had as kids to, to still get to do it, buddy, I do not take it for granted. I will not ever, ever take it for granted. There's no way. I'm the, I'm the luckiest kid. I feel like, I feel like Charlie in the chocolate factory, you know, <laughs> Willy Wonka gave me, he gave me the golden ticket or, or I found the golden ticket and he gave me the factory. <laughs> Man, you, you seem like the real deal. And it was a pleasure talking to you, Damon. Um, Thank last you, question. Ernest. Opposite of unsubscribe. Subscribe. Everybody do as Damon Johnson says, subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. Um, I'm going to put links below in the description of, uh, I can go and get some Brother Kane merch and check out all their shows. They've got a two-week run, so get your tickets. And once again, Damon, thanks a lot, my friend. Ernest, I loved it, buddy. Listen, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry about the, the delays today, but I, I appreciate you being flexible. Oh, man, no problem. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to send Rick this image. Uh -huh.